Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for God's holy word as I, by God's grace and by the power of the Holy Spirit of God, for the glory of God and for the lifting up of Jesus Christ. It is all for him and by him. As I continue to preach in your hearing how to hope, lessons from the Israelites and their messianic expectation, part 47, the second coming chapel message number 262, and what an oasis is the word of God and the preached word of God in this topsy turvy turvy evil world in which we live with all of the bad news, strange news, never any good news, uh, even those, uh, even though some news anchors try to pull so-called good news out of the bad news. Uh, it's just good news to them, but it still all stinks. It's all tainted. Don't get taken by the okie doke. Don't be bamboozled. Don't be so easily fooled by what's happening in the world. There's nothing good happening in the world but Jesus the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the good news, nothing else but Jesus, plus nothing, minus nothing. So if you're sick and tired of seeing all of the bad news, the strange news, the crazy news, welcome to the oasis of the word of God being preached in the midst of it all. Turn in your Bibles, beloved, to Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 9. And I want to transport you to a day when there will be justice and peace. Because the Prince of Peace will be in charge. Isaiah chapter 11 verses 1 through 9 And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse And a branch shall grow out of his roots And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him The spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. You're going to want to be in that day called the millennial, the thousand year reign of Christ, when the king of kings will be here, if you will, the president of presidents if you will, the Lord of Lords will be here. The everything man, the God man, Emmanuel, God's son, Jesus Christ, God with us, will be with us. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord and he will not have to study anything he will understand quickly what the situation is you see, judges who understand things quickly can judge quickly. They don't have to go through the rigmarole, the lies, and 
court cases, and lawyers, and, uh, and so forth. When the Lord comes here, the cases are going to move quite, quite quickly uh, through the systems. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor. The Aubrey's of the day, the Floyd's of the day, the Brianna's of the day, the old white man who was pushed down and bust his head open of the day, they will get swift, quick, fair justice. The poor, those who have been oppressed. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. The Lord will deal with the wicked himself. That's why, beloved, in this day and time, you need to understand what God has stated very clearly. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Don't you worry about a thing. Stop trying to defend yourself. Stop trying to get what you can only get through God and let God fight for you. One of the things I love about God, and he put this thought in my mind late last night, is that when you read the Bible, God will fight for you, but he still wants you to fight. Have you noticed that? God will fight for you, but he still wants you to fight. You need to fight too. This is, this is a fight. This life is a fight. It's all right to fight. It's okay to fight. But make sure the Lord is fighting for you. And the Lord will help you win the battle. Verse 5. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins. That's, that's what the Lord is all about. Righteousness. Holiness. Justice, fairness, equity. You, you, you think that Solomon had some wisdom. Can you imagine the kind of wisdom Jesus will display? You, you just bring, you can just bring the people, the people who are disputing something before him, and there's not, he's not going to need to hear from a defense lawyer or a prosecutor. He's going to look at the people and say, okay, you win. You're right. You, you're going to be punished. <laughs> Blow away the wicked. Okay, that's, that's all it's going to be. We don't need to argue anything before the Lord. He already knows. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Not only righteousness, but faithfulness. One of the things that we want in the people that we have around us is faithfulness. Faithfulness. There's nothing more valuable than faithfulness and truthfulness and righteousness in a person. Here's what's going to happen when he's here. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. Even in the animal kingdom. And the leopard shall lie down with the kid. And the calf and the young lion. And the fatling together. And a little child shall lead the wild animals. And the domestic animals. What a day. Little child. Talking about a toddler. I can see it in my mind's eye. And the cow and the bear shall feed. 
their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and the sucking child, the little baby, under two years old, if you will. He said, Preacher, how do you know that? Because it was at two when all of my children would be weaned from their mother. And my wife would get pregnant again right after that. And that's why all seven of our children are two years apart. Two years old. And the sucking child shall play on the whole of the asp. And whatever the asp is, is bad. Kind of. And the wean child shall put his hand on the cockatrice's den. These are poisonous creatures. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mount. Those days will be gone when Jesus is here ruling and reigning. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord. There won't be any looting. Not when King Jesus is here. Uh, that's going to be put down immediately. Zap. Uh, soon you try to steal a television out of somebody's store. You're gone. You're gone. You dealt with right then and there. It's not going to be a long, drawn-out process. We've got to put you in jail and then pull you out and let you bail out. And uh, then we've got to have you come back in 30 days. No, there won't be any of that. There won't be any looting and robbing and killing. When King Jesus is reigning, they shall not hurt nor destroy like the people are doing in the streets of, street today. In the streets of our day today. In all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Jesus Christ will be the greatest earthly ruler in the history of the world. There will be peace and there will be harmony everywhere as the water, the waters cover the sea. It's going to be blanketed with righteousness, godliness, and holiness. Anybody who wants to act like the devil will be dealt with by Jesus himself. The Holy Father God are those who, are those who, uh, will be directed by him. The Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for your holy word. We praise you and we thank you that, uh, Lord, I don't know how you do it, but if we just preach through your holy word and follow your leadership, you give us the messages from your Holy Word and by the power of your Holy Spirit that we need at the time. And in this uh, topsy-turvy, confused, convoluted, chaotic world in which we live, we praise you and we thank you that you uh, have us here around your Holy Word and uh, with prayer, understanding and knowing that no matter how much we march, no matter how much we protest, no matter how much we have court cases, justice will never be what it should be until you come. Righteousness and fairness and equity will never be what it should be until you come to rule and reign. That's one of the reasons why you're coming. And we praise you and we thank you for coming the first time when you have made a huge difference. Just your death, burial, and resurrection has transformed this world like no one else or anything else. And so, Lord, to those of us who are truly saved and born again, our hope is not in President Trump or President Biden or President Obama. Our hope is in you, Lord Jesus. And uh, we thank you for the blessed hope that's in our hearts. Because we know that when you come to rule and reign, uh, we will 
will truly have not only peace that passes all understanding all over the world, but justice as well, and righteousness, and equity, and uh, the ceasing of oppression. And we will not have any more police officers putting their knees on our necks or shooting us because we are a different color or knocking us over because we have a statement to make, throwing us and slamming us to the ground because we're trying to stand up for what is right. Fam. So we look forward to your coming, Lord Jesus, and we know that it will never be right. We, ha we have a secret. We know a secret. It will never be right until you come. So we say with your servant, John, please come quickly, Lord Jesus. For it is in your name we pray. Ladies and gentlemen, right here, turn this this way. Just, just right in there, yeah, this, this way. There you go. And you bring it closer. Now turn it. More. You might have to do that. You reach back and turn. There you go. It's good. But it needs to stay the same way. Ladies and gentlemen, and Dr. Herb Van der Loot said that the return of Jesus Christ represents not only the ultimate sense of accountability, but the ultimate sense of hope as well. That's why we call it the blessed hope. Those of us who are born again for real. Those of us who are washed in the blood of the Lamb and who are truly saved. Our hope is not built in President Trump. Our hope is not built on President Trump or possible future President Biden or past President Obama never has been. Our hope is built on Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and Him coming back one day to deliver us all, red, yellow, black, and white, because we're all precious in God's sight. You can march and you can protest. You can fight and you can loot and you can rob. You can, and by the way, you need to understand the court system has grown into warfare. Pull this, pull this to you over here. Put it all the way to you without it going on. There you go. You know what a court is in, 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 in most cases? It's not a place of peace. A court in most cases today is a battleground. It is a form of warfare, full of lying, dishonesty, deceit, strategy, wickedness, unrighteousness, ungodliness. It's not a place for peace. 
It's a place where people get their lives torn apart. Even a divorce court is a place of warfare in most cases. You, you must understand this now for those of you who are thinking about and contemplating uh, a divorce. What you're contemplating in reality is war in the minds of the lawyers and in the minds of the judge. You may be thinking, well, you know, that's my former husband, that's my former wife, and things didn't work out, but I want, I want things to, you know, uh, go in an amicable and kindly fashion, and we just want to separate peacefully and joyfully and not hate one another and so forth. But that's not how your lawyers are thinking. Your lawyers are focused on war. And that's why we have so much, we have a, a war mindset in every area. It's white against black, black against white, <clears throat> women against men, men against women, old folks against young folk, young folks against old folk. This group of people that speak this language against uh, this group of people that speaks another language and so forth and so on. That's the kind of world we live in. And, and there are people who are lost and don't know God through Jesus Christ and they love it. There are people out there today protesting and fighting and, and, and yes, uh, and they love the warfare of it. I'm against you, and I'm showing you that I'm against you. And um, <clears throat> and then on the other side, you got police officers who, uh, some of them are gung ho and ready to fight and ready to knock heads right now. Some, just like some nurses, should not be working in the hospital because they're just in it for the money. They don't care for the people, they don't care for the patients. I know this because I worked in the hospital for years while I was in the Air Force. Some of those people who were nurses should have never gone into nursing. They didn't care anything about the patient. I, I know this because I had to handle all of the calls. We had a, a new high-tech office where all the calls from the patients and back and forth, the nurses came to our office. And I could hear the nurses talking about the patients and, and tell, them, tell them I'll be there when I get there. And, 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 you know, and they laugh about it and, and so forth and so on. There are police officers the same way. There are preachers in the ministry who are not to be in the ministry. They don't care anything about the people. They only care about themselves. <clears throat> That's the kind of world we live in. And it's never going to be what it should be until Jesus comes. Dr. Vernon C. Brown said in the 1940s, Samuel Beckett wrote a play called Waiting for Godot. <clears throat> which is now regarded as a classic. I've never seen the play, and I don't know all of the details of it, but my way of illustration, my baby son has introduced it to me, Daniel Ezekiel White. It goes like this, two men stand on an empty stage, <coughs> hands in their pockets, looking at each other. There is no action, no plot. They just stand there talking while waiting for Godot to come. But who is Godot? Is he a person? Does he represent God? Christian ethics, uh, Christian ethicist, Lewis Smeads, suggests Godot stands for the pipe dreams 
that a lot of people hang on to as an escape. Are you hanging on to a pipe dream? As the play ends, those men are still standing on the stage doing nothing, just waiting. When the 50th anniversary of that play was celebrated, someone asked Beckett, Now, will you tell us who Godot is? He answered, How should I know? The author of the play didn't even know who Godot was. Waiting for Godot is a parable of many people's lives, empty and meaningless, standing around, looking at others, talking to others about meaningless stuff all of their lives, a pointless matter of waiting, waiting for no one, waiting for Godot and they don't even know who it is. And if there's no God of love, grace, mercy, and wisdom, then life really is a hopeless waiting for empty time <clears throat> to pass. Waiting for Godot, waiting for nobody, waiting for nothing. How totally different, though, is Christian hope, the blessed hope. We're waiting and looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. That hope sustains us, a hope that beyond this world lies a life of indescribable blessing. May I lovingly encourage you to trust Christ as your Savior today. Stop waiting on Godot and wait on Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, because he'll give you kingdom peace right now. He'll give you hope right now. He'll give you something to live for right now, a purpose to live for right now, and then give you that blessed hope that he's coming to rule and reign, and you can be with him in doing so. And so, ladies and gentlemen, in our last two messages in this series, we looked at what this passage tells us about the lineage of the Messiah and the character of the Messiah. Now, thirdly today, look at the reign of the Messiah. And compare it to the chaos we have in our world today. Think about his peaceful reign in the future of order, orderliness and peace and, and blessing. Compare to what's happening right now as I speak. People raging, people angry, people mad, justice not being done. Still, we have marched for millions of miles and we still don't have justice, still don't have peace. Some of the greatest speeches ever given have been given and yet we don't have peace. We don't have joy. We don't have a just society. It's a dog eat dog world. It is indeed a rat race. Everybody out for themselves. The first aspect of the Messiah's reign is the righteousness of it the righteousness of it. In the Bible, if you have noticed in the, these uh, messages in this series particularly, righteousness is a big deal. Doing the right thing is, is a big deal in God's sight. May I lovingly encourage you 
by the grace of God with all that is in you is. Do what Spike Lee said and do the right thing. Do the right thing. Do what you know you ought to do. Someone said this the other day. It just so happened to be a comedian. Somebody was asking him about the riots and the protesting and what should be done next and so forth. And he ran back and said, people know what to do. Everybody knows what to do. And we can't just limit it to one little thing and put it all on the police officers. Everybody ought to do the right thing. Bankers ought to do the right thing. Church folk ought to do the right thing. Police officers ought to do the right thing. Black folk ought to do the right thing. Looters ought to stop looting. White folks ought to do the right thing. We all know what to do. We need to do the right thing. We need to practice righteousness. Or we will never have peace. We will never have harmony. We will never have uh, orderly, orderliness in our society. And we all know that because we live in a fallen world with a fallen nature. It's not going to happen until King Jesus gets here. That does not mean we ought not to fight evil and, and go against it and, and try to pass laws to make it equitable and fair for everybody. We still ought to do that, but you must understand no matter how, that's why we get to this point every few years. One lady cynically said the other day, every four years we, we get to this point. We, we have these strange battles because we're all fallen and we're all sinners and we're sinful by nature and by choice. Red, yellow, black, and white. Nobody is more right than the other. And things are not going to be right until King Jesus comes and he settles everything. So your hope needs to be the blessed hope. Not the hope of Obama. Not the hope of Biden. Stop trusting in these doggone politicians. Not the hope of Trump. It's so sad. We got some sick people in our churches who get caught up in politicians. They have not learned anything from church history. Nothing. Get all caught up in Constantine. And Constantine just rips the church and how he wants it and what he wants done and controls the priests, controls the preachers, appoints who he wants. What, what kind of mess is this? We haven't learned anything. We're supposed to be independent of the government. We're supposed to be like the Bible prophets who stood aloof and condemned when they did wrong and, and commended rally when they did good. We need to be like Nathan who went to the king and said, Thou art the man, you're wrong. Well, where, where are our evangelical preachers? In light of what the president has done this past week. <clears throat> leading his whole administration outside for a field trip in front of a church that was not, where he was not even invited. Didn't go inside the church and then going to hold a Bible upside down. Where, 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 are, his, where are his evangelical advisors? We haven't heard from them. We heard from liberal uh, 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 preachers and, and others and Catholics and everybody else uh, conservative in their views but 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 not down with the evangel where are where, where, where's, where's Dr. Jeffress where's Dr. Jack Graham where's Dr. Uh, man out in California forget his name they've been invited to the White House and everything where's uh Dr. Franklin Graham. Heck, where is even Paula White? Where, where, where are these people? 
Why haven't we heard from them? We don't hear from everybody in the world about this foolishness. Nobody, I mean, where, why weren't they with them? His evangelical leaders. What happened? Why weren't they marching across the street? Why weren't they uh, there to, to give advice on how he shouldn't be pushing people out of the way so he can walk across the street for a prop, to hold the Bible up as a prop? What sacrilege? What disrespect of God? And, 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 and not only that, I'm sure he didn't ask anybody about this. But to do stuff like that, to try to appeal to the evangelical, yeah, that's our president. Use horses and uh, tear gas to move the people out of the way so he can walk across the street and hold a Bible in front of a church where the pastor didn't want him to come. I didn't even know there was a shrine to the Pope. They ought to tear that down. Tear that? What? What? What are we doing? A shrine to the Pope? I'm not a Catholic. I can, under I, I can understand. I disagree with it. I can understand you're having a, a, a shrine to Mary and Peter and Paul, a statue for them, but not Pope John, Paul. Somebody ought to take a torch to that and burn that down. What, 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 the, what is the president doing over there? I never even knew, I didn't even know they had a big old fat statue of the Pope. God forbid. What heresy. What idol worship. He, as far as popes go, he was one of the best ones, but he, he's not worthy of that. Let me, let me let me name another one. What, what happened to uh, Harry, Pastor Harry? I forget his name. Pastor Harry, evangelicals, the evangelical. What, where, where were the evangelicals? Why were they marching across the street in the tear gas with the president and poor little uh, Macanini? Poor little Macanina, the new, the new spokeswoman for Trump. This looks so pitiful. You know, uh, jacked up little black pants. You need to start wearing that. That's so ridiculous. Got her out there. Got got the, got the uh, attorney general out there. I, I've never seen anything like this in my life. I've never seen anything like this, and it's something so ridiculous. And every last one of the men that I have named, they ought to condemn the president for this foolishness. But they're not. They ought to rebuke him. They ought to be a Nathan. And walk into the office of the president, every last one of them, and all at the same time in unison. Thou art the man. Mr. President is going to say, yeah, I know I'm the man. I, no, 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 Mr. President. That's a, that's a phrase in the Bible. Thou art the man, that means you're wrong. Okay? Don't get it twisted. You're wrong for doing that. And you need to apologize to all Christians. You need to apologize to the, that church. You need to apologize to those people you blew out of the way so, so that you and your, your crew... Your, gang, your political gangsters could walk across the street and all whites. No, I didn't see one black person. Not as a brown person, a yellow person, or a red person. All white. That's not a good, that's not a good look, Mr. President. Where was he, your evangelical leader, Harry Jackson? What happened to him? Is he, he's still living, isn't he? The other little black uh, uh, evangelical leader. Where were they? Were they consulted? This is ridiculous. And it makes evangelicals and Christians look so stupid. 
and so ridiculous. It makes Christianity look like we could be bought. We can be bamboozled with this, this okey-doke foolishness and mess. It's nothing but mess, people. I don't care if Obama does it, Trump does it, Biden does it. It's nothing but mess. And you need to stop putting your hope and trust in these politicians and these wicked men and women and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and, uh, and, and get the blessed hope in your heart. Because things are not going to be done right until Jesus comes. And we need some of these evangelical leaders. And, and, and not only that, I, if they don't walk away now, if they don't say, Mr. President, we love you, we appreciate what you've done, you have not gone far enough, and this right here is, is, a, is a bridge too far for us, we cannot continue to walk with you uh, after doing stuff like this. And on top of that, you're not consulting us. We're supposed to be on your evangelical advisory council. You are not consulting us. You're going out here doing stuff that we don't know what you're doing and then we we got egg on our face we can't and then you made us sign all kinds of agreements where we can't say anything publicly unless you sue us to death but uh, I, I can't ride with you anymore Mr. President unless you repent of this foolishness you apologize to this nation for what you've done and from now on, when it comes down to stuff dealing with religion or faith, you need to consult with us first. And if you're not willing to do that, and if you're not willing to listen to our advice, then we need to disband this so-called evangelical advisory committee. But we can't. We can't. Somebody, one of the one of the pastors, we can't. Cannot do this anymore. We're walking away. We'll be praying for you, and no doubt we'll probably end up uh, voting for you still, personally. But we cannot recommend others to do this. Uh, it's up it's between them and the Lord. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 3 to 5 says, And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. We're talking about Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And we're trying to encourage you to stop getting all caught up. Your blood pressure's up. Your sugar is up. We're trying to uh, keep up with all of the mess that the politicians are doing and, what the, and all of the mess the protesters are doing, the three Ps, and all of the mess the people are doing. And some of you preachers are looking very, very badly and weak and powerless. You have no moral authority because you have compromised the word of God to be in the company of charismatic leaders, political leaders. Neither reprove after the hearing of his ears but with righteousness shall he judge the poor. What is right? Black folk, just hang on. White folk, just hang on. Red folk and yellow folk, just hang on. The marginalized and the oppressed, just hang on. For the day when Jesus Christ will reign and you will have justice and peace. He will judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. As I told you, you chill out and just remember, God said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. 
Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins. Basically what that says, my dear friends, is that Jesus Christ, the King of kings and Lord of lords, is all about righteousness and doing the right thing. You cannot roll with Jesus if you are still about doing the wrong thing and thinking that doing wrong will bring about right. Righteousness is just all in him and all over him. He, he, he doesn't want to hear anything about unrighteousness. He's going to deal with that, but he's all about righteousness and what is right. And faithfulness will be the girdle of his reins. He's faithful. He's dependable. You can trust in him. You can depend upon him. In all of my years of serving the Lord, I've never met anybody, red, yellow, black, or white, who said anything negative, I'm talking about born again people, about the Lord, of the Lord not coming through, of the Lord not being faithful, of the Lord not being consistent, of the Lord being arbitrary, uh, uh, unfair, uh, 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 leaving me hanging. I never heard it from anybody. <laughs> and they may have gone through some serious straits and some serious chastisement, but I've never heard that from one soul, not one, in over 40 years of preaching that the Lord did me wrong. Never. I never. I never. I'm never. I know. And, and I know. I can't say anything. I would couldn't even think about saying anything. Like God has been better to me than I've been to myself. What needs to be admitted is we have not been good to God. And that's why we're in this plague. And that's why all hell is breaking loose. In this once greatest country in the history of the world outside of Israel. Not Rome, Israel. Not Egypt, Israel. Not Greece, Israel. The greatest country in the history of the world is Israel. No country has influenced the world like Israel. None. America is great because we have loved and helped Israel. Stood with Israel. We can expect this kind of perfect rule. We don't have that now. They have a black AG up in Minnesota, but it's not guaranteed that, that he's going to nail them to the wall just because he's black and just because he's popular. Attorney General, black Attorney General, down with the liberal cause. And you, 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 you mock my words. Don't think this is a, 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 a open and shut case. Just because you saw a white man with his knee on a black man's neck while he was handcuffed for nine minutes. That's not. That's not. Once the court gets a hold of it, it's a different ball game. Mm -hmm. So you need to understand that in this world, that's that's what you got to deal with. But in the world to come, when King Jesus comes, when King Jesus comes, you don't have to deal with all of that. As he sits on his throne, he, he can just look at you and, and the case is going to be over. I don't know what he's going to do. He might just move his eyes to the bed and the police officer and just take him. Let this person go free. Give them, uh, give them a million dollars. Next. <laughs> uh, you're not going to have to deal with all the okie doke and the lies and dishonesty and little uh, quick little ways people can uh, can fool people. Ladies and gentlemen, we can expect 
this kind of perfect rule from someone who has the spirit of the Lord resting upon him over the last month or so. As you know, there have been many protests and demonstrations across the U.S. and even throughout the world over the killings of three black Americans recently. Many people do not trust the system will provide justice in these cases, especially because two of the killings were by police officers. Many people are worried that the bias of the judges and jury members will lead to unfair rulings. Now, you need to understand something about the justice system in America. Lawyers know judges. Judges know lawyers. These people are friends. They go golfing together. They eat lunch together. And uh, if you don't get the right lawyer who knows the judge, and that's what is uh, what you need to focus on. Justice is not what it should, it's not going to be what it should be in this country. Red, yellow, black, or white it makes no difference. So your lawyer needs to not only be smart and well educated and gifted, he must be well connected. And if you think differently, then uh, you're not you're not aware of what's going on. But in the reign of Messiah, Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, we will not have to worry about all of that. No, no, no. We don't have to worry about all of that. Because he does not judge just by what he can see with his eyes or hear with his ears. He's got discernment that we have never witnessed before. He has wisdom a trillion times greater than the wisdom of Solomon. He looks into the heart of man to discern their true intentions. And his judgments are always righteous. His judgments are always right. The old saints have, the old black saints have always said, he is a lawyer who has never lost a case. And so when he becomes judge, he will always be right. Make no mistake about it. Let's pray. Holy Father God in heaven, we praise you and we thank you for our time together around your holy word. Lord, help me to wrap up things well and properly. And most importantly, giving people under the sound of my voice an opportunity to believe on you, Lord Jesus, as their Savior. Speak to the hearts of the saints who are so caught up in this world, caught up in uh, trying to get justice, marching and protesting and raging, looting and stealing and robbing and killing and hurting one another. Lord, uh, I feel sorry for all of them involved. I feel sorry for the three Ps. I feel sorry for the, uh, the people feel sorry for the protesters. I feel sorry for the people who have been hurt and harmed. I feel sorry for the politicians. I feel sorry for the police officers. I feel sorry for all of the people. For all of them are caught up in a web of confusion. And no hope of really getting it right without you. So Lord, I thank you for the blessed hope that one day you're coming and you're going to straighten out all of 
the crooked places and uh, you're going to uh, deal with all of the evil that has been done by red, yellow, black, and white. And we're all guilty in your sight. And we're no better than anybody else. So have mercy and grace upon each and every one of us. From the politicians to the protesters to the uh, police officers and especially to the people who have been devastated by oppression and evil and wickedness and sin. And one of my humble prayer is that they all will hear the gospel and come to know you as Savior. In Jesus Christ's name we pray for us. Amen. Now, dear friend of mine, if you are with us today and if you are not a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, may I lovingly urge you to trust him and to trust in him as your Savior because he is coming again and he is going to judge the world and you do not want to get left behind. So here is how you can place your faith and trust in him, Jesus Christ, as your Savior for your soul's salvation from the power of sin and the punishment and the consequences of sin, which is eternal judgment and eternal suffering, eternal death in that awful place called hell. First, the dear friend, please accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's laws. The Holy Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have failed our ultimate judge, God Almighty. We have already lost our case because of our sin, our disobedience, our rebelliousness against Him. Second, accept the fact that there is a penalty, there is a punishment for sin, always, always. The Holy Bible says in Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. We die because of our sin. Our bodies go to a grave. These priceless bodies die. They were not made to die. They were made to live on forever on earth. This is your earth suit. But because we have defiled it, because we have disobeyed God's word, we must die. We have defiled it with sin. Our bodies must go to a grave and be buried back into the ground. From dust we come and in dust we will return because of our sin. Our evil. But our soul lives on forever somewhere. The soul can't die. That comes from God. You must understand that that given by God, his breath, that's your soul. It can't die. It's not going to be annihilated. You will spend eternity in hell. You know why God is waiting so long to come back? Because he loves you and he wants to give you every opportunity to believe on him. That's why. That's why. That's why he's waiting so long. Because he's trying to give you every opportunity to believe on his son, Jesus Christ, so that you can be saved. Why? Because eternity is going to be long. How long? Long. How long? As long as you can imagine. Millions of years you will burn in hell. You will be tormented in hell. You will be weeping and wailing and crying and grinding your teeth together in pain in hell. In hell for millions of years you will remember everybody's face, everybody's uh, attempt to lead you to Jesus, you will regret for the rest of eternity. In hell, you will be there for millions and billions and trillions of years. And the saddest aspect about hell, my dear friend, is that your soul will never be able to get out. Your soul can't die. It's going to live somewhere forever, in heaven 
or in hell. Now you have you have no problem with going to heaven forever, but you you should be concerned about going to hell forever as well. You know, you know that you can't do evil and live in your sin and go to heaven. You need to repent of that and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and pray and ask him to save your soul. So thirdly, dear friend, accept the fact that you are on the road to hell right now as I speak. You don't have to commit any more sin. You have sinned enough. You've done enough evil already. And you're on your way to hell. While the blood is running warm in your veins and the air is in your lungs, while you're still breathing, I can still breathe. If you're living, you can say, I can still breathe. While you're breathing, you're on your way to hell. And while you're breathing, you have the opportunity to change your destination by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. I can breathe. Mr. Floyd, the police officer, snuffed out his life when he said, I can't breathe. But right now, you can say, I can breathe enough to believe on Christ and pray and ask him to save my soul. But right now, you're on your way to hell. If you have never trusted Christ as Savior, you never accepted the fact that you were a sinner and that you needed a Savior and you believed on Christ, if that has never happened in your life, you're on your way to a devil's hell as I speak. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 10, 28 in one of his sermons, and by the way, Jesus Christ preached more on hell than anybody in the Bible. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than he did about heaven. Jesus Christ preached more on hell than most of our modern day preachers today, sad to say. But he said, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Hell is a real place and hell is bad news. But I have some good news for you, dear friend. You don't have to go to hell. You can go to heaven while you still breathe. While you're still breathing, you can change your destination from hell to heaven. They tell me that Mr. Floyd got saved and that he was trying to help others get saved. He's in heaven today if he trusted Christ as Savior. And so he does not need to breathe down here anymore. He's in a better place. And he is pulling for you to get saved. Because just like he didn't know when he was going to die, you don't know when you're going to die. Today may be your last day. So in order to be saved, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart that he Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you, so that you can live forever with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart, dear friend, and to save your soul, and he will. For Romans 10, 9 and 13 says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou you shalt be saved. Just believe it in your heart, dear friend. I plead with you. Don't go to hell forever. Go to heaven forever. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell? Saved to what? Saved to heaven, to be with God, to be with Jesus Christ to be with the people of God, to be with the angels of God. Heaven is going to be so beautiful that the ground you walk on is going to be transparent 
go. Only God can even come up with a concept like that. You know that. We can't even think of anything like that. Gold so pure, you can see through it. Why would you want to miss that? That's ridiculous. Go ahead and take God upon this and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And pray and ask him to save you. And he will save you. If he can save me, a wretch like me, he can save you. Let's pray together. Repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou you shall be saved. Holy Father God, repeat after me. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I admit that I have broken your Ten Commandments. For I have lied before many times. I have stolen things before. Lord, it may not have been something big like a car, but I have stolen things off the job. I've stolen change out of my dad's uh, penny job. And uh, I've stolen maybe a pen from the job. Lord, I have stolen before. I have also coveted in my heart and lusted in my heart after people and things that don't belong to me. I have dishonored, disrespected, and disobeyed my parents. I have disrespected you by taking your holy name in vain. Sometimes, Lord, as you know, even with cursing. For Jesus Christ's sake, your Holy Son, please have mercy and grace upon my soul. I know that just like a criminal deserves to go to jail, I deserve to go to hell. For Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive me of all of my sins and save my soul from a devil's hell. Lord Jesus, I receive you into my heart and into my spirit. Please save my soul and change my life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of all of my sins. Help me to truly be sorry for all of my sins. And Lord, help me to turn from my evil ways and to follow you in the new life, Lord Jesus. For it is in your name I pray. Amen. Dear friend of mine, if you just trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, and you prayed that prayer with me and you meant it from your heart, I declare to you that based upon the Word of God, you are now saved from Him. And you're on your way to heaven. Welcome to the family of God. Welcome to the family of God, dear friend. Congratulations on doing the most important thing in life. And that is simply believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and receiving Him as your Lord and Savior. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to GospelLightSociety.com and uh, download my free book titled, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. It is a free book to help you to grow in the faith, to tell you next steps and what you ought to do to grow and be the Christian that God wants you to be. For Jesus Christ said in St. John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Until next time, my beloved, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you real good, is my prayer. And dear friends, the next time I will preach will be first thing I will have a service will be tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock uh, Central Time, 11 o'clock Eastern Time, 8 o'clock 
Pacific time and around the world live. And, uh, and then right after that, probably a half an hour after that, I'll preach another message in the Just Jesus Evangelistic Campaign. And so we'll be glad to have you. Uh, if you have a church home uh, somewhere, you go there first, and you're welcome to come and be with us if the Lord will so lead you, because primarily we're all about evangelism here and getting people saved. So if you have family members and friends, even religious church-going friends and family members who you know deep down they have never been born again, uh, you need to text them and let them come on over here to hear the gospel and uh, to hear about heaven and hell. And uh, so that their soul can be saved from hell and saved to heaven. And you will be doing them the greatest favor in life. If you're not going to witness to them, then let me do it. Uh, I'll be more than happy uh, to do so. So God bless you, dear friend. Have a wonderful day. Remember, give God at least 15% of your time today. Not only your money, but your time and your talent. Uh, at least 15%. You ought to give them more. And pray without ceasing. Get your little Alexa, Echo, or whatever you got, a Google thing. I, I, I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm an Alexa man. Uh, I don't have a Google, whatever they call Google. But, but whatever you have, you, you program it, you tell them. I want you to remind me to pray. Because if you don't get reminded, some of you are not going to pray. Every hour. And you just say a breath prayer. Don't get intimidated by it. Just say the Lord's Prayer, and you'll see that the Lord's Prayer only takes about 45 seconds. Then pray based upon the Lord's Prayer after that. Pray about your problems. Stop running away from your problems and pray about your problems. Face, that's how you face them. The troubles and difficulties that you're dealing with. Your marriage is messed up. Pray for it. Don't, I know it's painful and ugly. Pray about it. Your child is acting like the devil. Pray about it. Man. You'd be amazed what God will do with dry prayers. What is a dry prayer? A dry prayer is when you don't feel like praying. You don't feel anything. You don't even think your prayer is hitting the ceiling, much less heaven. Over here. And, however... If you are a child of God and you're praying in the name of Jesus Christ, it is. See, you're praying by faith. You're not praying by feeling. You got a major bill that has to be paid on Monday? Give it to God. Pray. I challenge you. Pray about it. Stop worrying about it and fretting. Because, you see, that affects your attitude and your relationship, how you treat other people and all this kind of thing like that right now. You know why? Because you're fretting and worrying about stuff you can give to God. And you can enjoy one another and love one another and, and, and have a good attitude and spirit. When you failed out of college, pray about it. Financial aid is messed up, pray about it. Don't have enough money to continue, only got two more classes to take to graduate, pray about it. Stop worrying about it, stop fretting, stop complaining. Your check didn't come in from the government. You don't know why. Don't worry about it and get angry. Pray. God can make the check come. He can make it come. If he can make a hammerhead float on the water, he can make the check come. Okay? I'm, I challenge you. If you. I'm talking to people who are saved. If you're not saved, I don't, you know, you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm talking to people who know Jesus. Who know God. They may have gotten away from God. But deep down on the inside. They know Jesus. I challenge you. Don't just get excited about the little service we had. Or the previous service. And the uh, standing between the living and the dead. Don't just sit and listen. And t I want you to do something. Starting right now. That will carry you through this day. And help you through this day. And help your family through this day. Pray without ceasing. You're mad because your child has not called you. You, 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 you you're mad because you uh, uh, 
haven't spoken to your child in a long time. Why get mad? Pray. The best communication you can have regarding your grown child now is your prayers to God about your child. It's going, it's going to be a three-way triangle communication. Trust me when I tell you. You're going to pray to God, God, do this in my child's heart and life, and God's going to reach down and do it in your child's heart and life. Okay? When he gets good and ready. Because they have to grow just like you had to grow. They'll learn the hard way just like you learned the hard way. Don't we worry about it. You put God on them. They, God, nobody can whip you like God. Uh, did you hear me? Nobody can whip your behind like God. Nobody. Trust me when I tell you. Only reason why I'm here, the only reason why I'm still with my wife after 33 years, the only reason why uh, we have survived is because way back yonder, before I met my wife, God chastised me real good. And uh, he taught me to obey him. Or uh, else. Have you been taught that lesson? By God? It's a great lesson. It's not great while you're going through it. But it's great for life. You'll start having the peaceable fruits of righteousness once you get your behind whipped by God. Yeah. Have you ever experienced that? Well, go ahead and just let God have them. Let God have your son. Yeah, you done. You did your part. Let God take over. Give your son over. I told my children, the worst thing I can do for you is pray for you. It's the best thing, but it's the worst thing because uh, God does not play. And you can't stop him. What? What? You can't stop my prayers. Little boy, little girl, you can't stop me praying for you. And you can't stop God answering my prayers. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I'm trying to help you. Don't lay it for just the church service. Carry the church service with you, and you do. Here's how you do it: you pray without ceasing. You pray a breath prayer at the top of every hour. We're going to be doing the same thing. When you think about me, pray for me, and see when God reminds you of about two things. And those of you who have not been praying without ceasing, He's going to remind you of ten things you ought to do. You need to get your notebook and a pen. Don't try to type it up on the computer; it's going to get lost on the computer. Get your notebook and go to uh, Eckert's, for those of you who have Eckert's, go to a Walgreens, go to Walmart and get yourself a notebook, a prayer notebook. And while God, while you're praying, God will remind you, especially those of you who have not prayed in years like you're supposed to. God will remind you of ten things, I guarantee you. And he'll, he'll, he'll give you five solutions. Now, those of us been praying every day, he'll remind us of one thing or two things. And these things need to be done. Okay? Get your Alexa. Don't, don't put it back in the back room. Get your Alexa or whatever you have and put it right out front. And here's what you tell Alexa. Alexa, give me an alarm. Set me an alarm. I don't know what time it is right now. If it's 1 o'clock now, I don't know what time. Alexa, I'm going to do this today myself. I do it. I do it every day. Alexa, set an alarm for three o'clock p.m. You got to tell him Alexa exactly what you want. I guess you have to set for three o'clock a.m. You don't put that p.m. on it. Then Alexa, set an alarm. And, and, uh, and Alexa, was, she'll, she'll respond to this. Alexa set a prayer alarm for 4 o'clock p.m. The devil's not going to like it. Your flesh is not going to like it. You're going to have folk in the family upset about it. it, it it's the strangest thing. All you're going to do is pray for about a minute. But everything in you, your flesh is going to hate it. The devil's going to hate it. The devil's going to try to block it. The devil's going to try to knock Alexa over on her head. All kinds of stuff. You're going to have family people, family for Why you got that thing ringing? I'm trying to watch the movie. Stop the movie and pray. I'm trying to tell you, you give God 10, 15, 20% of your time, 
just like you, those of you who have given God 10, 15, 20% of your money. He blessed your money. Now you have a house. You're the first one in your family ever bought a house, etc., etc., etc. You got a nice car and all of that. You had it before the plague. Hmm? Okay. Just like he blessed that, he'll bless how you give time to him. And so just walk with him all day long. Pray about everything. Any little thing that about physical ailments, migraine headaches. Ask God to take that away from you. Diabetes. Ask God to take that away from you. Heart problems, high blood pressure. Ask God to heal it. Ask God to show you how to eat. Ask God to help you uh, keep that all that sodium out your diet because you know it's killing you. But you can't stop. Ask God to help you to stop. He'll do it. He'll do it. Need some money for food because you want to buy your own food? Pray and ask God about it. She won't even hear you and answer you. Okay? But when he when he gives you the answer, do what he tells you. If he tells you to contact a family member that you hate, you better go ahead on and do it and just apologize, come up clean. Listen, just don't try to sneak up on these family members that you don't like and you haven't spoken in years. Just tell the truth up front. Sister Betsy, I'm calling you, and I'm, I'm going to tell you up front, I need some help, okay? But now, secondly, I want to apologize to you for the attitude I had to you about four Thanksgivings ago, and I have not spoken to you since because I've been mad at you, and I've been wrong, and I was wrong then. I'm wrong now. And yes, I'm calling primarily to get some help, but i got to come clean with this right here, okay? Get that right with God, because see, God wants you to call him for two reasons. Number one, you're wrong for having the attitude you had towards Sister Bessie. And you're wrong for uh, not speaking for two, four years. And, 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 and now you need some help. And God arranged it that way. And here's what happened. God downloads a head right in your mind while you pray. Because he wants things right. And then he'll bless you. And he'll use somebody that you haven't spoken to in six years to help. And they're going to be just, and they're going to be blessed for helping you. And they're going to be happy that you made it right. Then they may come back and say, well, you know, I didn't call you either. So I apologize. And then y'all back talking together. And that's exactly what God wants. Bye-bye, people. God bless you. Let's all stand. I'll be here all day, all night. Fired up and ready to go. Like a fire shut up in my bones. Let's pray. Holy Father God. We glory, we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. We praise you and thank you for what you've done and for what you're doing and for what you will do. Lord, help all of us under the sound of my voice to pray without ceasing, to confess our sins, to repent, to come clean about lies that we have told in the past and living a lie. Lord, help people to come clean and to repent. Get their hearts right with you. Make things right with others. And Lord, when you tell us to do something, Lord, help us to do it. No matter how painful it might be up front, it's going to bring about peaceable fruits of righteousness on the back end. And we give you the glory, praise, and the honor for it already in advance. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for our sake. Amen. God bless you, people. Lord willing, I'll see you tomorrow. Pray for me.